Good morning, folks. We've got a number of visual splendors for you today, a couple interesting space science missions, and stories that make for good conversations in the community. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun were mostly quiet. We do see that active region incoming around the 9 or 10 o'clock position while the one on the south departs. The solar wind and KP index were mostly quiet, so we're going to go to the fun story in space weather today, a sun diving comet. There was actually a smaller companion out ahead of this one, which you might be able to catch on the C2 frame. And we're actually going to be showing this red one again because the core of the sun diver actually survived close approach. You can see it exiting the top of the frame there. Well, folks, let's continue the visuals, shall we? Couple fun animations here on active galactic plasma nuclei, what they refer to as a black hole. Gorgeous color work here belies the scientific struggle surrounding these space monsters, not to mention the propensity to ignore modeling key pieces of the flows. Even in their science, it shouldn't be dark in the center as plasma swirls in front of it, and given the radius shown here, we should probably be seeing the interior ring of the Taurus in at least one of those models, but we did not. Okay, awake yet? Good. I don't care how many times they essentially do this same study with a little different twist, I'm probably going to report it every time. Common pesticides are taking out the bees, and we're worried about murder hornets. Okay, folks, I was subtly hinting during yesterday's 30 Intelligent ET Species in the Galaxy Right Now paper that their numbers were low. In the comment section yesterday, many of you were not so subtle about agreeing with me. And as you can see from the title of this one, it's like they wanted to tell them, hey, add a couple of zeros onto that number without actually having to tell them. Radio astronomy up next is the VLA and ALMA kick into gear at Antares, the red supergiant star. They were able to locate the different sections of the atmosphere and have put our planetary orbits on there just to give you an idea of how big this star's atmosphere really is. Folks, tomorrow, Vega begins the multi-sat launch program carrying numerous science missions, CubeSats, etc. And one of those is going to be Picasso, my top pick among the large fleet heading up tomorrow. It's going to have its eyes on the ozone at sunrise and sunset positions. And when Earth's magnetic field weakens enough to imprint the UV and proton signatures in the daily rotation, that little artist is going to catch it. Last but not least, there is a mission already up there, and it only has about a year of fuel left. Not many people know about the Elfin mission. You will not have heard about it on TV, but you can learn about it if you have an access point into Michael Mann's nightmares. It's already showing the coupling of the ionosphere, magnetosphere, large-scale processes, and space weather, which is another notch on the ladder leading scientists to the realization that there is a perfect, multi-faced coupling of space energy with the atmosphere and Earth's electric layers are merely the interface. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members had a little deeper look episode yesterday on unexpected progress in climate science. It will be a good primer for the video special coming later this summer. We've got your wind map forecast and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.